and today we are going to be reading a book. Normally these videos will be coming out Monday and Wednesday, but because Monday was our first day back to school, our first two videos are coming out Wednesday and Friday of this week. So for these videos, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be reading through the literature study books. So I, if you want to read along and turn off the volume and read the pages, by all means you can. Or if you'd like to listen to Mr. Chambers read the story out loud, keep that volume on, listen through the story, and after each chapter, there will be questions to answer in Google Classroom. So the first book that we are reading for the school year is this, One Day in the Desert by Jean Craighead George. Okay, so it's a short book, less than 100 pages. We've got nine chapters, so that means there's going to be nine videos to watch and answer talking about animal and plants and how they survive here in the desert. Okay, so without further ado, on to chapter one. Chapter one. At daybreak on July 10th, a mountain lion limped toward a Papago Indian hut, a small structure of grass and sticks on the bank of a dry river in the Sonoran Desert of Arizona. Behind it rose Mount Scorpion, a dark red mountain. In all directions from the mountain stretched the gray-green desert. It was dry, hot, and still. The cactus wrens began to sing. The Gila woodpeckers squawked to each other across the hot air, arguing over their property lines. The kit foxes, who had been hunting all night, retreated into underground dens. The bats flew into caves on the mountain and hung upside down for the day. The lion was hungry and desperately thirsty. A poacher's bullet had torn into the flesh of his paw, and for two weeks he had lain in his den halfway up the mountain, nursing his feverish wound. As the sun arose this day, he got to his feet. He must eat and drink. The desert stretched below him. He paused and looked down upon the dry river called an arroyo. It was empty of water, but could be a raging torrent in the rainy season after a storm. He twisted his ears forward. A Papago Indian girl bird, Wing, and her mother were walking along the bank of the dry river. They entered the hut. The lion smelled their scent on the air, and he limped towards them. He was afraid of people, but this morning he was desperate. Six feet, or 1.8 meters in length. He stood almost three feet, or a meter tall. His fur was reddish brown above and white beneath. A black mustache marked his face. The backs of his ears and the tip of his tail were also black. He growled as he came down the mountain, which was a huge clinker thrown up from the basement of the earth by an ancient volcano. Near its summit were pools where beaver and fish lived in the desert, and which the mountain lion normally visited to hunt and to drink. But today he went down, for it took less energy than going up. The rising sun burned down from space, heating the rocks in the soil until they were hot, hot even through the well-padded feet of the lion. He stood in the shade of a rock at 8 a.m. when the temperature reached 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 26.6 degrees Celsius. This day would be memorable. Birdwing, her mother, the lion, and many of the animals below Mount Scorpion would be affected by July 10th. Some 
would survive and some would not, for the desert is ruthless. Okay, so I know these chapters are short. It took me just under five minutes to read through these chapters. However, if you would like to watch this video again to make sure we've got good answers for the questions in our Google Forms, by all means, you are welcome to. After watching this, hop on to the Google Forms, answer the five to 10 questions for this chapter, and I will see you in our next video. Bye.